do you want to do a presentation or should I start directly? No, no, I will uh, make okay. an introduction. <laughs> so I know. <laughs> you can now switch your camera and microphone. So Sounds good. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Basia Mule. I'm the head librarian of Hanamet Library, one of the branch libraries of Koch University. Welcome all to our presentation for the three best posters uh, of the virtual session we organized. Koch University libraries organized this session as an attempt to, to bring together examples from international and Turkish academic and research libraries and create this uh, freely accessible pool of evidence. Authors uh, contributed with unique posters, which um, uh, presented their survival skills during the pandemic and uh, showed how we adapted, how we are still adapting to the situation, how we uh, keep serving our community, how we are doing our best to continue with activities, how uh, we offer resources, and many more. Among the 14 international uh, posters we received, we chose the three best based on three uh, selection criteria, based on their content, on the design, and, the, and um, on the number of, co uh, of comments, positive comments they received during the live session. Today we give the opportunity to the authors of these uh, three posters to present again their cases and share again uh, with you their experience. So um, in case you missed our live session, this is your chance to get to know the authors, to learn more about uh, different international cases, ask your questions, ask, um, make your comments, maybe share, uh, exchange your own experience. Before we start, I would like to share some technical um, details with you. This session is recorded and in order for us um, to continue uh, uh, flow uh, with a, a nice flow, we have automatically disabled all the microphones and all the screens. So for your comments and for your questions, please use the chat option. You can find it at the bottom of the screen. If you take a look right now, you will find it. And offers will reply to you after they finish with their presentation. Without further ado, I would like to start with Jennifer Salomonson from Sweden, from the Swedish, Swedish University of Agricultural Studies Libraries. Jennifer will present how they managed to close the social distance in their libraries. Jennifer, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, so um, my presentation is going to be a bit special because uh, I felt like this is a perfect opportunity to close the distance, which is the name of my presentation. So I will start it here. Now you should be able to see it. This is the poster. It's an interactive poster. So I would warmly recommend you to go there and, and click by yourself and, and experience it. It's voiced. Uh, I will give you the link at the end of the presentation. Um, today, what I'm going to do is just take my favorite highlights from the poster and apply it uh, to you all here. So the first one um, is the check-in question that we always do at the beginning of a digital meeting, which we are having right now. So I'm going to ask you a question. If you as an organizer don't have the, the imagination or uh, you don't feel like finding a question, there is a few generators online. Here is an example of one, for example, that just generates a random question. So we used to to use it uh, at the beginning of every meeting just to get ready, do a small chat, speak about things that are a bit more personal. It's a very good way of doing some team building too because we are far away and it's not that uh, easy to just have small chat right now. So here you can see a few examples, um, but I already have a question, so we're not going to use those. So my question for all of you is, what is that little thing that makes you happy or smile every day? So I'm gonna let you one minute, everyone write in the chat 
all your ideas, everything that makes you happy. I can, I can give you an example right now. So this is my favorite mug, for example. Up. Here you go. So drinking my coffee in my favorite mug every day makes me smile and happy. And I'm going to open the chat so I can share with you all the wonderful ideas that we're going to get. My cat. Yeah, so that, yeah, my cat makes me happy every single day. You might see her maybe pass behind me at some point. Might happen. <laughs> Looking at the sea, very nice one. I don't have the sea here in Sweden. I have the woods, but uh, it sure makes me very happy to open the window and look at the trees. Uh, it's, a, it's a very nice thing to, to do, look, looking outside. Eating sweets, that is also a very good one. <laughs> I have a few colleagues at my job that uh, bake their own breakfast every day. Uh, so it smells good and they can eat something tasty. Watching birds in the trees from the garden, from my porch. Look at the blue sky and the green trees. And to see my family healthy, yeah, that's too. Uh, waking up in the morning and seeing our family healthy, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Sending little messages too, to check on friends and family makes me very happy too. Hi, have a nice day with a little son, having good health. Also, my cat is called Kadi. Very good uh, Turkish movie, by the way, Kadi. I recommend it. If you don't know what to watch this weekend, uh, watch Kadi. <laughs> my wallpapers, that is a very good idea too. Uh, creating uh, different wallpapers on your computer. So when you start it, uh, it makes you smile and make you uh, feel good for starting the day. My wife wrote post-its and put on the wall. That is super cool. That is super, super nice. Lucky you. Working with PGs on. PGs? I don't know what PG is. Pajamas. Oh, we, we have it also. I will show you later. Perfect. Working with pajamas. Yeah, soft pants are the best. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Continue writing ideas. Um, I, will, I will come back to them later. So just continue flooding the chat with good ideas and feel good mood. Um, uh, I will use it later. I will continue my presentation with a little introduction about uh, what happened with the student side. So in 2019, we launched something that we call the Biblio Cafe, because it's a cafe that we take at the library for students uh, to be able to come and um, speak Swedish. Uh, we realized that international students, they feel very lonely and they want to learn Swedish. So we thought we could do something like in between, play games together, uh, read articles, um, small chats and at the same time learn Swedish. It was a huge success um, and when the corona um, arrived we switched it directly online. We didn't wait, uh, we just prototyped it and uh, it works super nicely. We did it two times per week instead of one because we had a bit more time and everyone was online so it was easier. We have a library that is separated on three different locations. So it was a chance for us to be able to meet and be all together. Um, that was really great. We had students from Umea, Alnarp and uh, Uppsala. Uh, we could save the chat, which is awesome when you learn a new language and you share tips and links. Uh, so that was a big improvement compared to the in real life uh, form of it. Um, we realized that free Wi-Fi and a mobile app was very important because students that had to pay for the Wi-Fi, they didn't show up sadly. Uh, so that was a little uh, minus. So if we are able to do it I will, again in the future, we will keep both online and um, physical at the library. 
And we got a wonderful surprise. All the students that finished their studies and were back in their respective countries, Germany, France, England, they came back online. We, we weren't expecting that. So that was really cool. They continued learning Swedish just because they thought it was interesting and meeting the friends they had made during the BBO Cafe. So that was really a, a success story for us. If you have questions about that, you can absolutely go to my poster later. There is all the feedbacks from the students and uh, a little bit more details or contact me uh, about it. You can also ask questions at the end of the presentation. There will be two minutes for that. And my next uh, favorite point is the feel good habits. So you see what I did there. Um, we did it at the library. We asked ourselves uh, what feels good, what makes us happy every day. And we created that image that is an interactive image with all our favorite tips to feel good. So when we feel a bit down, when we feel like, ah, oh, I, I don't have motivation, we can just go and click one of those uh, little advice. I will show you my favorite ones. So take regular maker poses with your cats. They are great reminders. Those are actually our uh, library cats. So cats from my colleagues. We have uh, walk and talk. So we take our um, phones and we have the meetings outside uh, walking. Uh, it's a very good way of brainstorming and being able to um, yeah, get new ideas and fresh air. Um, we have the pyjama one, kind of. On my fourth day of telecommunicating, I realized that clothes are totally unnecessary. So like you can see, humor is a very, very big uh, part of feeling good every day and staying motivated, laugh every day. And the favorite one from Sina, enjoy the little things. So here there is a little list of our things. And uh, I'm gonna take the, all the comments that you guys posted and I'm gonna update uh, the poster so we can see them later here in the poster because I feel like it's a great way of making you participate uh, in closing the social distance. Um, if there is questions, I can answer to the questions. So I'm gonna stop sharing so you can see me and open the chat. Let's see. So we have other ideas, watching more movies from home. Last night I watched Spirit and the Beehive. Okay, good, good recommendation. I will check it this weekend. In my office, a big plant growing so much. Yeah, I actually moved my uh, office uh, plants home so I can feel a bit more outside and uh, see uh, plants. No mask, feels good at home. We can see each other and uh, have a little bit of more closure. So that's a... A good thing. We actually realized that uh, the meeting that we do uh, once a month with the whole library, so we are 50 uh, different, uh, 50 employees uh, plus, um, works better online. Uh, so even in the future, if we go back to something a bit more physical uh, in real life, we're going to continue. We took the decision last week to continue having those meetings one time per month uh, online for more equality. Everyone gets to write in the chat, gets uh, the time to talk together. It, it makes it uh, better for everyone, actually. I don't know if anyone has questions. I highly encourage you to go see the poster because you can click around and it's uh, how many people joined the Bibio Cafe online? Was there a consistency or changed? Very good question. So we had a bit less people. We had like between five and 10 people uh, when in real life it was 15 people, but some students, they came two times per week instead of coming only one time and they really enjoyed it. They said that they were learning more, that uh, right now with Corona, they don't have much social interaction. So being able to see other students two times per week was very, very nice for them. So it did change a bit in that regard. Mm.
you're welcome. <laughs> What is the subject's walk and talk? So it can be very different. Um, for example, right now we are working on um, the introduction of the library online in case we cannot go back uh, physically um, to the library. And uh, we did a walk and talk to brainstorm on ideas. Oh, I can imagine a movie tour where we follow someone. I can imagine an interactive picture where we can click on different things. So this kind of meetings, you can do it without having the computer, having to type. Um, it's pretty easy to take notes on your phone when something good comes. And with Zoom, you can actually record. So you can go through the recording to just get back the ideas, worst case scenario. So it really helps getting ideas and getting the creativity flowing actually. How can I join this community? It sounds so nice. Uh, that is a question that I will let. Yeah, so someone just joined, was invited by a colleague. How can I join this community? It sounds so nice. So welcome. Yeah, it is a very nice community. And I will let uh, the University of Turkey maybe answer to that. Um, do you have other projects like Biblio Cafe? What is your plans for future in terms of user services? So we have another project that sadly has been posed that we, we cross fingers to be able to, to launch later. We buy a Nintendo Switch with a lot of controllers to do exactly the same thing. Allow um, students, teachers, employees to mix and enjoy five minute, a five minute race together, uh, smile, go to the meeting a bit more refreshed and just do something outside from, uh, from the school for a little while. So we are wanting to create that gaming corner and sadly right now, uh, yeah, it's a physical thing so we can uh, sadly not do it. But we did in, during the Bibio Cafe play um, games. Yes. Thank you very Thank much. You. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, it is very clear you reached out to the community and you uh, managed to engage them more. The Biblio Cafe idea is great. And uh, me being a foreigner in Turkey, I think it would be very successful uh, for me too. Uh, I mean, if we would implement this Biblio Cafe here to improve my turkeys. And from your um, habits, your daily habits, my favorite one is the daily dose of humor. Try to laugh once a day, at least. <laughs> this is a very good one. Our second presentation comes from um, Rachel Evans and Anne Burnett, who are joining us from the United States very early in the morning. The University of Georgia, library, uh, the Library of School of Law, and they will tell us how they managed to connect more as a library team, but also con connect more with their community. Anne, this is your turn. Thank you. So this is just the, the um, top of the poster that we shared. And um, we um, created just a little PowerPoint slide um, show that has um, screenshots that we shared in our poster because we wanted them to display a little bit, um, a little bit more clearly than they would show up in the um, Zoom the Zoom call here than they would from the poster. So what we did was um, uh, set up a, a trio of apps to help stay connected uh, with each other um, during uh, this quick change to working at home due to COVID um, and also to stay connected with our community. Um, so uh, our law faculty and our law students and the rest of the, the law school staff. Um, I want to make it very clear that I um, really am a reporter in this, um, kind of an end user who benefited from uh, the work of people like my co-presenter, Rachel. Um, I was actually on vacation right before we went to uh, working from home. So, uh, I was blissfully hanging out with my 15 year old son and my husband and we knew something was going to happen pretty, pretty soon, but we had no idea how rapidly this was all going to happen. Um, and uh, 
I'm going to let Rachel talk a little bit more about how quickly it happened and the communications that, that happened in the law library. But fortunately for all of us, she and one of our colleagues, um, Geraldine Kaleem, had presented on some of these tools at a conference at the University of Georgia just very recently um, at the end of February and um, also had used a lot of these tools before. And I had, I had used Slack um, in, not at the law library, but I had used it with some social groups that I belong to. And um, I had used Zoom. Um, I don't know how many of you um, are in IFLA, but we use Zoom a lot for meetings and I had used it a lot. Um, I had never used Trello, but I'd used Kanban for some other things, but we'd never used any of these things extensively at work. But Geraldine and Rachel um, had just presented on it. And so, Rachel, I'm going to let you talk a little bit about um, how it all kind of went down with this rapid transition that <laughs> when we realized, uh oh, we're going to all need to be working from home very quickly. Yeah, so thank you, Anne. Um, as she just said, Geraldine and I had literally just presented the week before um, we really started hearing a lot of talk about COVID. And um, we hadn't really thought about using the tools that we had been speaking about on a library wide level. We were talking about using them in small teams and for our own task management, just as you know, we were both moms, we were trying to multitask and we were kind of working from home, but not because we had to, just because you know, we were short on time. And so that's how we were using the tools in late February, sort of leading up to this. Um, and then there were regular meetings that were popping up on the calendar that I was not invited to, but I could see that my supervisor and our director were beginning to meet about COVID closure just, you know, to get a head start on things in case we um, went offline and we were working from home. And that all happened very, very rapidly. And between March 9th and our very last meeting um, in person in the library, which was at a great distance, we were all very spread out in our large reading room. Um, and it was something I will never forget. We actually have photographs. Um, a colleague who was up on the third floor took a picture of everyone spread out for this final meeting. And so that was on March 13th. Um, a few days before that, our director, Carol Watson, reached out to Geraldine and I and said, hey, you just talked about this topic. Which of these tools do you think would um, be best for us to use? Should we be all working from home next week? Can you guys decide on something, set something up, um, just so we have something in place, just in case we're not back on Monday? Well, it turns out we don't come back on Monday. <laughs> and the um, tool that we chose to, to implement at first was Trello. And for those who don't know Trello, it is um, like Kanban Flow, like some of the other task management tools. It's an online based application where you can create these sort of cards that give you um, little tick boxes and you can drag it across where something is in progress and eventually something is done. And we have kind of used that to sort of keep all types of resources, um, but especially the resources that were changing very rapidly related to COVID. And then um, we ended up also rolling out more of an instant messenger type of platform, which is Slack, where we can do more real-time communication with our colleagues. And um, finally, we started having our Zoom meetings and we've even started doing happy hours where they're much more casual. They're not required to attend. It's just a time when you can unwind and actually see other human faces the way we're doing right now. Um, so that's sort of our timeline in a nutshell. And we have been using all three of these tools ever since, including today. <laughs> that's right. So here's, um, here's a screen capture from Trello. Um, and this just shows um, a lot of people needed some quick access to instructions for how to use the VPN to, to get to a lot of our um, secure files and things on campus. Um, um, and then just different things that different teams needed to be able to access quickly. Um, um, different documents that we share, keeping track of projects. Um, here's a blog um, that uh, the public relations team um, uh, tracks their projects on using Trello. So that's been really, really useful for that. Um, do you have something to say about how you guys set up Trello, Rachel? 
Um, I would say for me personally, I've been a long time Trello user and I was using it for a lot of my personal task managements. So the way that Geraldine and I set this up um, is is very much the way that she and I were using it, which isn't to say that if you decided to try this tool out that you would have to use it this way. But because I was coming from um, sort of the Kanban, um, almost a manufacturing industry kind of workflow where we've got a to do, a doing and a done, um, most, of these, most of these boards where we're using them with teams are sort of set up in that way. So there's the idea that from left to right, you're sort of dragging things across the board. Um, for this specific purpose, as Anne just showed, where we had a column that was uh, very specific to COVID resources, we have some standing columns that are just resource columns. And Trello is great for integrating with Google Drive or making attachments. So you can add JPEGs of things, PDFs, spreadsheets, whatever it is that you're working on that you need to share with colleagues. It has been a really great space. Um, for us to be able to find and retrieve and look at things uh, simultaneously on the web that otherwise we used to be sharing on our closed servers, which not all of us have steady access to from home. So it's been a really great resource. It's almost like a shared drive that we can all access to get these things. Um, so some of the columns for the library wide board are um, very static and that's helped us be able to find those resources from home. So um, I chose this, this is Slack, and I chose this particular screen capture be, for a couple reasons. Um, this is from our Digital Commons channel, and Digital Commons is our digital repository um, where we capture the, all the scholarly output of the law school plus the, the law school's archives. It's a huge um, online repository for our law school. And, um, I chose this because I wanted to show, um, for one thing, we've used it um, to keep it, all of us encouraged and to like show a lot of support for each other. Um, in addition to just, you know, helping share information and to keep each other informed um, about projects and, and um, to share advice and information throughout this whole time. But you can see here, Rachel, shared with everybody that one of our colleagues, Leslie, had just um, harvested the metadata for over 12,000 photographs um, for the deposit for the online repository. And um, so that was important information for us all to know, but it also was a way to give Leslie, you know, props for um, having done such a great job. And then we have also had a great time uh, with the, the GIFs from that you can do in Slack. And we probably go overboard on it, but um, <laughs> we have a lot of fun with that. So that was one of the reasons I chose this particular screen capture. Um, and then this particular one came from our reference channel um, where we, we're doing, of course, we're doing virtual reference. And, you know, normally if we were in the physical space, um, if we had difficulty with a question, we would just pop our head into somebody's office and say, hey, uh, can you help me out with this? Um, but now we just go over to the Slack channel and say, hey, can you help me out with this? And um, very quickly, two, three, four people will respond and um, help, help us out, whoever is on reference out with a reply. So this is just an example of that. Uh, you have anything to say about implementing Slack or? Um. I think that as far as getting slack off the ground, you know, I, I very clearly remember sitting down with Geraldine in my office the Thursday before we began working from home and having the conversation of should we or should we not um, try to get a slack channel and a slack workspace started along with Trello. And we decided at that time, no, we thought it would be we, we didn't think people would like it. We were worried that it would be too much of a technological curve for some of the people in the library, um, particularly people who had never used Slack before. We knew that people who had used it before for different projects was um, sort of spotty among the people that if, if we did a library wide one would be communicating like this. And it was really surprising. I have to say of all the platforms that we rolled out, this is the one that took me totally by surprise that other people were excited about it, that they've had fun using it. 
Um, it has been an amazing way to relieve stress that we're all feeling with the way that the, the things in the world have been happening so rapidly. Um, it's sort of our own little safe space social media that's just for the library. So um, it's not all business. There's a lot of channels. You can see on the left, there's a list of the channels. As of today, we're up to 23 channels. And uh, some of them are just to make you feel better. Um, we've got Positive Panda, which is literally a bunch of, of GIFs of pandas uh, being happy. And then we also have things like um, our primal anxiety scream zone, which is when you're feeling frustrated, you can go post a picture or your comments about whatever's bothering you. And everybody just kind of chimes in. Um, going back to the little things that's very similar to what Jennifer was sharing, I feel like some of our channels sort of fill those gaps. Um, we have a coffee and a tea club, which is kind of just posting pictures of your morning coffee or your breakfast. Um, so it's not all business, but some of it very much is business. And it's been a great blend of those two things um, to kind of give us that around the water cooler feeling that we obviously don't have when we're teleworking. Um, this is just um, showing um, the, the statistics for the number of messages um, in the public channels in Slack and in the private channels, because we do use it for direct messages between each other as well. And I, I know we're running out of time, so I'm going to move on. Uh, everybody's familiar with Zoom or you wouldn't be on this call. Um, uh, upper left hand corner here is um, one of our Friday happy hours and I will say I think one of the things that has made it such a success is that we start it during working hours. Um, so it's not after hours, um, although it usually continues into after working hours because we enjoy it so much. Um, and um, lower left is um, our virtual pet therapy that we did for our law students. We had several sessions of that. Um, we before we went to working from home what we had started doing was um, in person we would have registered therapy dogs come to the library physically during finals to relieve the anxiety of our law students during final exams and um, since we couldn't do that um, this time we did virtual pet therapy sessions um, where we all brought our pets on on camera um, and then speaking of our law students in the upper right hand corner, we did a video for them um, for our law students, a congratulations video for them um, because they did not get to have their graduation ceremony this year. And in the in the United States, um, a law degree is a three year graduate degree. So it represents a seven year, seven years of higher education. So it was very disappointing for them that they did not get to have their their graduation. So we did a, a, a video for them. And then this is Rachel meeting one on one meeting with her um, direct supervisor, Wendy. So um, the final slide here is um, uh, Rachel had mentioned a little bit not thinking people would buy into Slack, um, because maybe it was just a little bit too much new. Um, but uh, this shows that we have had a lot of buy-in from the staff um, in, in Slack. So um, also with Zoom. And you can talk really quickly about maybe the numbers in Trello don't really reflect its usage. Yeah, so it is a little misleading because as you saw, Trello serves a different purpose than the other two. Um, Trello is not for real-time communication necessarily, but just so everyone can access everything they need to and so that people can work with each other and assign each other projects and then we can keep track of that progress as it kind of moves across the board from left to right. Um, so the actively contributing folks tend to be those who are supervising others, which is primarily our three associate directors and our director. And then they will kind of ping and assign cards to the people um, that are responsible for that. So it's, it is, keep in mind that it is serving a different purpose. The people that have joined can still monitor it, even if there's not really something for them to, to actually do on the board. Um, but it's sort of a place where we kind of monitor things. And then the only other thing that I wanted to make sure that I mentioned is that um, sometimes when we talk about all three of these platforms being rolled out sort of as a trio and that we're using all three of them is that um, people can feel overwhelmed like really all three how do you keep up 
up with all the spaces. But one of the reasons that we chose each of these um, particular applications is because they do all integrate with each other very well. So personally, I use Slack as sort of my home base. And you can add little apps to Slack just as you would add other users. So um, I have my Zoom and my Outlook calendar events hooked up to my Slack board so that I can join Zoom with one click from Slack. I also have a Trello bot, so I don't have to go to Trello to um, create a new card. I can actually send a command from Slack and it can post or move things across the Trello board. So there is a way to kind of use them all holistically. Uh, I would like to ask a question that comes from one of our participants. Uh, all these free applications seem very cool and very effective. Um, either way, with uh, COVID-19 or without, we have this question, how difficult has it been for the uh, staff members to use the applications or how easy it has been? Do you want to field that, Anne, or would you like me to? How difficult is it for the which members? For the staff members, was it difficult for you all to start working with these applications? How effectively are you working with them? I, I think um, that some people very quickly um, jumped on all three um, and not everybody. Um, and I think it tied into um, just the feeling of being overwhelmed by everything, um, not just these three apps, but just everything move, going um, to working from home and then also dealing with all the other pieces of um, dealing with uh, COVID, um, you know, like how do you get your groceries um, safely? You know, it, it, it all tied together, this feeling of being overwhelmed and setting up your home offices. And, um, you know, a lot of people have in our library have children and the, the schools were shutting down. Um, so I think um, probably Trello was confusing for some people at first. Um, and I, I want to say I detected the biggest, the biggest resistance to Slack maybe because maybe because it wasn't talked about before we, as much before we went to working from home. I don't know. Does that sound accurate to you, Rachel? Yeah, I think the only other thing that I was going to add is um, some of our efforts to to sort of get people acclimated to them just because of the timeline they had to happen after we closed. So we did already start talking to people. In fact, at that very last meeting on March, March 13th, Trello was announced by the director that it was something we were working on, people were aware of it. And a full week leading up to the closure, we had all been testing Zoom from our offices. So people had a little more comfort level with those two tools, they knew what was coming. Um, Slack was very much, we feel like this is something that we need and can use and we're going to deploy it after the fact. And it wasn't until the, the first Thursday that we were closed, so almost a full week after that last in-person meeting, that I did a Zoom demo of Slack and I invited everyone to come and they could ask me questions and I kind of showed people in that demo how to do some of the things like how to use a command to make a GIF uh, appear or how to create a channel um, and some of those other things. So, you know, I think Anne's right. I think it was just a matter of, of timing that was a big part of that. Since uh, you have been using all three applications, there is another question. Uh, what are your, your thoughts uh, for uh, Microsoft Teams versus Slack? Any preferences? <laughs> I can say personally that I prefer Slack. Um, I've used Microsoft Teams, I guess with different professional organizations. Um, across the board, I've used almost every single one of the platforms at this point. And personally, um, myself and a few others have Mac computers at home instead of PCs. So that has been another divide is sort of the devices that people have on hand. Not everyone was issued um, a device from the university or from the law school. So most of us, if we had a computer of some kind at home, that's what we started using and that's what we're still using. And that has been a part of um, which sort of which platforms are working best for some people and maybe which ones they're attracted to more. I personally have a horrible internet connection. Hopefully it hasn't made me glitch out so far, but um, 
that forces me to use my phone more than my computer at many times. I end up getting bumped off my computer and I have to use my device. And so the other thing that I love about all three of these over some of the others like Microsoft Teams is that the apps are really solid. I can do my work from my cell phone if I need to. And often I do end up doing that. Um, so I will say, at least from my personal experience, the experience that I've had with Microsoft Teams, for example, that is a product that tends to work much better on a PC, and that makes total sense that it would, but I do not have that resource in this environment right now, so. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for the presentation. It's very clear you managed to um, connect even more, and being connected to other people, either these are our friends or our colleagues, is so very important in any case. Uh, and this situation we're facing this uh, last month pointed out even more uh, the importance of that. And thank you for joining us so early from the States. Uh, last but certainly not least, a team from Spain. I will try to pronounce correctly all the names. Alicia Fatima Gomez Sanchez, Maria Martinez Cabrejas, Juanma uh, de la Camara de las Heras and Concepcion Campos Asensio, representing uh, different institutions in Spain, will talk to us about a very important initiative from health librarians, the Ayuda Biblioteca. Alicia will present on behalf of the team. Okay, so thank you for the invitation. Also, thank you for considering us like one of the best three posters. This is really nice. I'm sharing my screen so that you can also see the presentation that we have. I hope that you can see it now. And uh, yes, um, our poster was about an initiative that uh, health librarians in Spain from different uh, not only from different institutions, but also from different types of institutions. Um, they, they start working together uh, to help each other. So this is uh, the poster. I'm going through the, um, I will show later this, um, this uh, Geniali that uh, Concha did um, weeks ago before the poster. And uh, so, what is Ayuda Biblioteca? Ayuda Biblioteca is, as I told before, uh, an initiative that was um, st started in a very spontaneous way. And uh, this was because many, um, well, I have to say, health libraries in Spain, we have been uh, working kind of together for many, many years. We have a catalog for only health, health issues or health librarians or health publications, or well, not only health, also biomedical. And uh, there is like a network and this network includes people from hospitals, from uh, universities, from research centers. There are also people from private companies. So it's a very, very mixed um, um, collective. So we, when COVID started, of course, working in health libraries, we need uh, we needed to give a lot of information to be very quick, and um, especially in the hospitals, uh, clinicians did not have time to uh, get information to get the right information, which is even more important because, as we have seen, there are lots of paper retractors, also a lot of preprints, or you know publications that are not have not been peer reviewed uh, already so it's quite uh, the information is quite uh, unstable so um, some of these health librarians uh, they started to talk together they created in whatsapp group and with the idea of helping each other and you know maybe if you have a, an article or an information that is also useful for me because you know, COVID is COVID for everyone, then we can put it together and then we can help each other. So we started with this WhatsApp group and we created a Google Drive and a Google, um, well, I, I will go first to this Google Drive. 
where we started to create different folders and put in all the documents there together. And because the initiative was not, was not only for us, but also for our users, um, we also put this in a Google site so that anyone can check the information that we get. Uh, we, we have all this information in Spanish, but if you go to the presentation, you can go and maybe you can see that they are, the, the, the main page is organized by different folders after subjects. And we have, I don't know, cardiology or um, um, uh, dermatology or palliative care or different types of areas because COVID is, of course, something that is um, making a big impact in different areas of, of hospitals or research. So uh, we created this Google site for everyone, and which is public, and you can go there, and the information you can uh, access there, um, of course. And uh, for communication, we had a Digo channel. We have an internal WhatsApp group only for uh, the people working uh, or making taking part of this group. And we have also we created also an email address so that anyone that has a question can write there and and ask and maybe propose. Uh, some articles to put there. We also, we don't have only articles, we also have um, infographics and uh, um, legal documents and everything. And uh, also another way to communicate uh, with the people outside uh, is the Twitter hashtag uh, Ayuda Biblioteca and well this is, uh, these are examples of different tweets so that, um, you know, if you go to Ayuda Biblioteca, you can check the news that we have, also publications or, or in, uh, people that are talking about us, etc. So this, is, this was the start point. So then we received this information about this um, virtual poster session. And we thought, well, maybe it could be interesting to show what we are doing. But not only to show what we are doing, but at the same time, take profit of that and analyze uh, how are we doing? What are um, our, our strengths? What are our opportunities and so on? So we decided to make a SWOT analysis, uh, reflecting all this work and all this information. So um, we were, thinking about all the threats that we had, all the strengths that we had, um, the weaknesses and the problems that uh, could appear, and also the opportunities that we, um, that, uh, that this initiative can bring to us. For instance, uh, uh, strengths we can, for instance, uh, we, uh, as strengths we have the workforce that we already had. We had this collaboration already going on for many years. We also consider that it's strength that we are a horizontal coordinated organization and this was spontaneously so there is not a boss or two bosses and deciding everything but everyone is contributing as far as they can. Uh, and also what we also have is a good knowledge of technologies and tool in uh, working in virtual environments. Um, of course, some threats, for instance, we had concerns about the information quality. As I talked before, the publications have sometimes uh, inaccurate information. Uh, we all know that there have been many important papers retracted, some of them in very, very, very big journals. Uh, so not if for the People of these journals, it's very it's, it's difficult to, to know if the information is really good or not. Can imagine that is also for us, it's not always like uh, crystal clear. Um, also, we have like fake news and, and of course, lack of evidence because uh, 
in biomedicine, you can go and search for evidence. But because of COVID, it's a very new thing. We cannot even go and search for evidence because there are not all the, all the or many of the studies or most of the studies are new. Um, one important thread was the lack of institutional commitment. And um, this, we already know that uh, many special libraries or many libraries, but especially very small special libraries, they have the risk that um, in many institutions they can disappear. I don't know how is the situation in, in, in other countries, but for instance, in Spain, uh, there are many schools talking about, well, we need more space, we will close the library, you know, the library is not so important, and we will use the library for other commitments. So this lack of institutional uh, support is really one of the problems that we can face. And also, we don't know if, the, if this initiative can continue or not, because it's voluntary, so we depend on ourselves, and it's not always very, very easy. So some weaknesses also, we have lack of economic and human resources or material resources. We need free um, tools and we, we use our time and our illusion and our, and, and, and our, our willing to do things that is not very, um, is not, we don't have the help from our hospitals or our institutions. Um, of course, we have lack of experience in such a situation and not only at work, but also in general, we don't know how to, um, how to act with, with many of the, of the issues that we have. And, um, and because it's also voluntary, um, we also need to balance these uh, duties with Ajuda Biblioteca, which is a work in addition to our work, normal work with our own telework and personal situation, which is not, you know, sometimes it's not so easy. You, some people are teleworking, we have, we have children at home or we have to, you know, to, to users that can call us or make a scab with us and so on. But on the other side, and this is what we think is the most important, we can see some opportunities and um, the most important is probably that um, we can, we think that we can use that to give more visibility to our profession and to our duties. And also we saw that there is an increase of uh, visibility of open access um, publications and also the need people knowing that open access is important to documents and also data about COVID. Um, and of course, we have many free te technological tools. The two colleagues before, they were talking, you were talking about Zoom, about Trello, about Slack. We have, uh, for instance, we were using also Google Drive, we were using WhatsApp. So it's, there are lots of good things that we can take profit. So, this is Spain, and um, of course, people from all over Spain were there. So it's not only about, you know, um, there are all the communities are represented in this project or people from all the communities in Spain. And um, well, the SWOT allowed us to reflect also in our role of as librarians and also, um, to reflect about the weaknesses that we have to face. And for instance, we were talking about, well, this is uh, important and we, we have to face this uh, lack on, of, of support sometimes. But if we use that to increase our visibility, we can try to make this a um, uh, li little bit smaller. And uh, so we think we managed to transform or we are still working on transforming these weaknesses and the threats into professional challenges and and of course as i said before uh, to turn that into an increase of our visibility 
and of course we hope that the collaboration of this initiative will continue um i have to say uh, in Spain, we have been doing for many years, not every year, but uh, maybe every two years or three years, uh, an annual conference so that um, all the health librarians in Spain were meeting together. And it's not only that we know the names, we also know the person. And this also makes it easier to, to uh, continue, I think. Um, I, this is in Spanish. Okay, this is something that our colleague uh, Concha, which is also present in this chat and in this presentation, did. So it's um, a presentation about what is Ayuda Biblioteca, if, some, if any of you want to use that or check that, uh, even if this is in Spanish. But so we will find, you will find the, what is the project, why, or why we started this, this project. Um, what we do, so we do this, the main important thing is this, this website, this open website with uh, information with resources about COVID-19 and also how you can contact us. Um, these are different um, resources where we appeared. For instance, we, um, we were doing many um, I'm, I'm showing you uh, one of them. We were doing kind of videos, for instance, this one with, um, with, a, uh, with a radio, with a local radio. But we, we have been also in, um, well, I, I don't want to uh, put you all, the, all, the, inform, all, the, all the, the interview, but for instance, this one, we appeared, we had also the, the option to appear in the Spanish uh, national television. Um, which is also, I think, um, quite interesting. Um, we also appeared in different um, journals and, and newspapers and, and, and blogs. And um, for instance, uh, this is a kind of journal where we can see that they are talking about us, about this, this experience. Um, by the way, this is a uh, picture that had, has been drawn by, by a small kid uh, from, from, the, from, our, from, from Juanma, which is also, who is also here. And uh, yeah, and if you have more questions, um, well, of course, there were some, some comments and we tried to answer to all the comments that you were doing in this virtual poster session. But if you can, if you want to contact us, you can do it anytime. Um, this is us, okay, four of us. And I tried yesterday to learn how to pronounce this, Tessie but uh, I, <laughs> I, I think I, I have to try again. I hope I will, I will uh, practice enough to be able to, uh, to, uh, say that for next year when the Yahil conference is in Istanbul. So I hope um, until then I will say thanks uh, in name of uh, also of my colleagues so that uh, thanks for the invitation. And also thanks to the other colleagues uh, from the other two posters because they were really interesting all the presentation. It's nice to see how what other people are doing in different parts of the world. Thank you very much, uh, Alicia and the whole team for the presentation. It is uh, so amazing to see how Spanish librarians, more than 90, right, joined forces. And as I uh, mentioned in my comment uh, below your poster, I think, I really believe, I don't think, I really believe this can be the starting point of an international collaboration. Um, this is such a big help um, for those uh, wanting to find this type of resources. Um, so, muchas gracias, and uh, the secular, as they say here in Turkey. The secular, is, okay. <laughs> correct, very correct. <laughs> there is this question for you all that uh, it was partially uh, answered by Juanma. Since this is such a great initiative, so beneficial for everyone, 
Uh, how can you sustain this? Who could be the one uh, funding uh, this initiative? How can you find funds? Who can support financially? Hmm. This is, Maybe this the is... government or um, individual people? Uh, I don't know. I would say um, I think the institutions the different institutions should really support that. But I was also thinking during this um, whole time that um, there are also many crowdfunding uh, options now. And why not to help to ask users to help us with, uh, I don't know, maybe if, if any of the researchers or doctors using that um, that have no libraries because some of the hospitals are closing libraries or they are they are having the libraries but without a really specialized librarian helping them and this is happening so I, I, I know I don't know how what I would like to to uh, invite uh, my colleagues because uh, they they are really work in hospitals and universities. I'm like, I'm not working right now in, um, in a hospital or in, in, in a biomedical library. I have been for many, many years, but, uh, um, but I think both of them, I think the institutions should help, but also the users should help us to get funding and to also to ask their institutions to support the library because we are not only there for um, managing the books, we are managing the information, we are searching for quality information, uh, we are there to help them to retrieve the right sources, to help them also to publish and to make their research more visible. So I think this is a, should be a joint, um, a joint work in my opinion, but of course it's difficult and and uh, and so we don't know we don't even have enough doctors and and I don't know maybe one of my colleagues can say something about that. I'm trying to see the chat that. There was another question about how much time uh, are you devoting since this is a voluntary uh, work? How much time, more or less, are you spending extra to your working hours? Um, I think it's, you know, we are 90 people working there. There are people probably working many hours a day, and there are people that are working maybe some hours in the week, during the week. I think it's, but I don't know, maybe Concha or Juanma or Maria, what would you say? Maybe you can say something? I'm, I'm, I'm opening the chat now, so. There are replies on the chat, uh, actually. Well, if you are seeking for international collaboration, Scotch University, uh, Scotch University Health Sciences Library is ready to uh, work with you. <laughs> okay. We also we also told in the in the chat that there are people from from Turkey willing to collaborate with us. So it's not uh, we share all the information. It's not something that um, that is like private or we hold the information. You know. So. Uh, you can also use for formal contact, you can use this email that you will find in the, in the presentation and you can even write an email and, and this will be maybe the best way to start like a, a formal uh, conversation. Correct. There is one more question for you from Sami Bey. Um, are there enough electronic resources in Spain? I mean, Spanish resources online. How is the, uh, the intellectual production on the, uh, on the topic? On the topic? Mm -hmm. 
uh, if I understood correctly, um, this is uh, what he's referring to. Because you only collect resources on COVID, correct? Yes, so, this is only for COVID. Mm -hmm. so this website uh, is only related. Correct. How many? There are, um, if I am right, um, I think we have lots of infographics and reports and, and also um, maybe not journal articles, but other information. They are, of course, in Spanish. Also, for instance, how to guidelines uh, of how to be with a patient, with, a, with, a, with a, someone that comes to the hospital or um, there are also in, in, of course, some information in Spanish, but the, the, the medical articles, the, the specific or the special articles are most of them in English because it's what uh, people read. Um, but there are, of course, some, some information in Spanish, more mm -hmm. national and maybe more uh, to patient related more than research related. And in the beginning, in Chinese. Ah, in yes. Mm. In Chinese. Uh, thank you so very much for this presentation and uh, for uh, getting this project outside Sp Spain, at least for us. If there are more questions, not only for the Spanish team, but for all the three uh, presenters, please, everyone can uh, write now in the chat. We still have a few more minutes, so uh, authors can reply back to you. I'm checking the chat. I don't see something else. It seems um, you managed to cover all questions, all um, to provide all answers. And of course, uh, people had the opportunity to see your posters uh, during the poster session and uh, put their comments there or ask their questions. I would like to thank you all for being present today, to congratulate you for being the three best poster authors and congratulate all the authors, actually, all uh, the 14 uh, international participants for their great work and for joining our team. Those of you being Turkish among the participants today, or those of you speaking Turkish, you're very welcome to join us next Thursday as we will present the three best national posters. The selection has been made based on the same criteria. So it will be nice to see uh, how the local libraries have been doing regarding this pandemic situation. Thank you all from the Koch University Libraries team. Best wishes to everyone. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.